Hello, it's Freya and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to do my May reading wrap-up. And May was pretty interesting because it was a month where I started all the books and finished precisely two. I'm quite happy with my reading because I was reading a lot, I read a lot of comics, I did read a lot of books and got quite far in some of the books that I started. I just didn't actually finish all that many. But it's okay, because I have plenty to talk about of the two that I did finish. So let's get started. The first book I finished in May was Wind Witch by Susan Denard. And I did not really like Wind Witch. Um, I felt that it had issues with its pacing. Um, it has four point-of-view characters, uh, two of which reside in the same city, and two of whom are um, kind of exploring the world outside uh, Nubrevna. And the book takes place in a time span of two weeks, but actually one of the point-of-view characters, namely Isolt, her storyline takes place in the span of two days in that two weeks. And, and the pacing was just so ridiculous. Like, for example, Merrick and her, his sister spend time in the same city these two weeks, and their point of views were both so slow and repetitive. There was so much that could have been explored, but they were used for Merrick's angst and Merrick's sister's angst. They, they are angsty characters and they angst about each other and their family drama. And I was like, guys, you have like this really interesting dynamic going on in this storyline with this mystery um, of, of this dark magic and you are using it to angst about things that are completely trivial in terms of um, reader expectations. Because as a reader, I knew exactly how things were going to get solved um, pretty much from the get-go. Like, it, it, felt, it felt frustrating to me because I, I felt like... I felt like the book was hammering me in the head with with what would end up being completely obvious. I was just... Mm, I wasn't feeling it. There was so much potential in those storylines and I felt like it wasn't fully utilized. Um, I was really surprised that Safi's storyline was actually the most interesting to me. It was uh, paced uh, very well uh, in comparison to the other ones. It had uh, really good tension. Safi actually got some character development and I felt like there was... Um, the antagonists in her storyline were more interesting. So it was actually kind of weird because I completely hated Safi as a character in the first book, but she made me turn around and actually start liking her in the second one because her storyline was the most interesting and and well done. Um, so I have no complaints about Safi. Um, her storyline also has like the most realistic pacing in terms of how, uh, how much time passes and how much uh, she actually gets to travel. And then there's Isolt and Eduan. And that whole storyline felt completely pointless to me. All the progress they make in that storyline ends up being moot by the end of it. Um, Isolt does get some character development, but the conclusion of her story arc made, made me go like... Um, like the journey there wasn't worth it. Because I was constantly in the know of 
how, what is going to happen. Like how her story arc was going to end. It was super predictable. So that made me go as a reader like, okay, when are you going to get there? When is, the, when is it going to happen? What's the point? You know, it was really frustrating. That, that was my main takeaway in this book. Frustration. Like, there was so much that could have been done. There was potential, and I could see that potential. But it just, it just came off as underdeveloped. And that made me kind of sad. And one of the things that really, I, in my opinion, one of the things that really brought this book down was the absence of a strong antagonist. That was the problem in the first book as well. Aduan kind of served as the main antagonist in the first one, but we already knew at that point that he isn't the main villain. He isn't even a villain, actually, um, of this series. But we hear these snippets of... Um, of the Raider King and of Corlant, but they don't actually do anything. They're just kind of these vague presences in the book. And this is the second book, and if it's going to be a trilogy, I don't know how many books there is going to be in this series, but at this point you should really start having encounters with the villain or having uh, some establishing factors of what this war is about, and who is the villain, and, and stuff like that. It's just... The lack of a strong central antagonist really brings the book down for me. And also, the world fe feels incredibly small. I want you to take a look at the map with me. So our hero and heroes end up in Lesna at the end of Truth Witch, and their journey starts from there. Merrick spends the entirety of Wind Witch in Lovats, whereas Safi ends up in the Pirate Republic of Saldonica. But her ship actually gets stranded here, so she has to trek all this journey to get to the Pirate Republic. Merrick is in Lovats the entirety of the book. Okay, moving on to Isolt and Eduan, who at the end of the first book were in Lejna. And Isolt makes approximately this journey in the span of two weeks. Approximately. I don't actually know which route she takes, because the book is not clear. But she spends two days in approximately this area. Two days is the entirety of her journey in the book. Safi, at the end of her journey, starts to sail towards Azmir. And that's where her storyline coincides with Isolt, who literally only has two days of narrative in this book. So, all that said, I ended up giving Wind Witch two and a half stars. I think it was better than the first book. But I honestly don't think that I'm going to continue reading this series. I only read this one because it was nominated for the Booktube SFF Awards in the Young Adult category. And I think I've seen enough. I'm, I'm not really connected to these characters. I'm not really connected to the story. It feels very... very mediocre to me. And there are too many books to waste my time on mediocrity. So, two and a half stars for Windwitch. And the next book I want to talk about is The Word for World is Forest by Ursula K. Le Guin. I read this book for Borrowathon and I ended up really loving it. I took my sweet time with this. Uh, it is very short. It is only about like 130 pages, and I read this in two days uh, because I really wanted to savor it. It is about um, this planet that has this um, alien race that is very connected to the planet and to the trees, and 
they have this very well established culture and and connection to the land and the humans from earth have come to colonize the planet and they have practically enslaved the native population and this book is about resistance and it is about the efforts of the native population to take their land back and drive the humans back where they came from and it is about how their culture and how their ways change because of this outside force and how even after they have taken back what's theirs they are altered by the experience and altered by the oppression and they can't go back to being what they were before and i just thought that this was such a raw reading experience I, it made me angry it made me happy it made me sad it made me root for the for the a chance to win and it also made me sad to see how how they became altered and how how there was no going back for them anymore and Ur Ursula K. Le Guin just keeps surprising me with her work I've now read this possessed I've read this one and I just want to read more from her all the time because she is amazing and s some of the things in this one were a little too on the nose the main antagonist is like the most mustache twirling villain i've ever seen um but even that said i was really impressed by this one and i ended up giving it uh four out of five stars highly recommend and there you have it this has been my may wrap up and what were some of the books that you read in May? Care to give me some recommendations? I'm always appreciative of those. And if you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will see you in my next video, which is going to be all about the comics I read in May. Bye bye!